Hello, hello. In tonight's Facebook Live, we are going to make this awesome kind of circular Christmas ornament. And I want to give credit to Samantha Clayton. Um, she is a crafter in the UK. Her blog is called Mixed Up Craft. And I just love the things that she does. But what's cool about this ornament is the top, I did not seal it, so you can fill it with goodies. So I'm super excited about that. All right, you guys should be seeing hands on again. This is the ornament we're gonna make. Now I know it looks like it's gonna be difficult to put together, but it really isn't. And I added this really cute little tag. We are gonna start with a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock that measures six and one quarter by 10 and a half. We're gonna score this at every one and a quarter inches. So we're gonna go ahead and score that at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and one quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and 10. Rotate it and then along the short side, we're gonna just do the same. Every one and a quarter inches, so one and a quarter. Two and a half, uh, three and three quarters, and five. I know those score lines will be a little hard to see, but they're all just equal squares, equal one and a quarter inch squares. And then we have this half inch section along the right side there. I'm gonna keep my stylus out. I'm just gonna grab a ruler here. And let me bring out my template real quick to show you what we're doing. All right, so we've done our one and a quarter, every one and a quarter inch score lines, both horizontally and vertically. And then we are gonna make, starting with the second square down, but the first square on the left, we're gonna make a little tick mark with our stylus at five eighths inch, which is halfway, it's the center point of one and a quarter inches. And we're gonna do that on every other square. It'll be easier to see on the template <laughs> than it will on my cardstock here. But I'm just gonna take my ruler and line that up and I'm just making a little, like just a teeny tiny dot right there at 5 eighths of an inch. I don't think you all are, are gonna be able to see that. Maybe you will. Right there. Okay, now I'm gonna do that again at the top of these squares but skipping a square. So every other square. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. But again, it's going to be the same squares. All right. So now that we've done those, I am basically going to connect that dot down to the intersection of score lines. Okay, so we made a little mark here and we're going to take our ruler and score from here down to that next horizontal score line. Just making a little triangle in each of those sections. So I kind of like to go all in one direction at the same time. And what's easiest for me is where I made those little dots with my stylus. That's kind of where I'm gonna go ahead and put my stylus, put my ruler up to the stylus, line it up to that intersection where I want it to go. And it just actually will make this go really fast. Just kind of move down the line, put my stylus right where we made those little marks and then move my ruler into place. All right, so let me show you what that looks like on the top there. See those triangles, every other square. So we're gonna repeat that, but going the opposite direction. All right, so there we go. We've done all of those triangle pieces. Okay, let me bring in the template again. So we are gonna end up removing some pieces where you see my little scribble marks, but first what I wanna do is fold and burnish on all the score lines with the exception of the diagonal score lines. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so we've done all of that. Now we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do the cutting away of pieces and then we'll adhere our designer series paper. So we're cutting away all the squares that are at the points, you know, above the point of the triangle. Hopefully you can see that there. 
and then we're moving removing these outside corner rectangles all right so first i'm going to go ahead and cut out those outside rectangles again just use your score lines as your guide for what you're where you're cutting and as i'm doing that i just always whenever i make three-dimensional items i just slightly notched in here Okay, that's just so we don't have any paper kind of hanging over the edge. All right, so now really what we're gonna do is cut up all of these vertical score lines to that first horizontal score line. So that's just the easiest, and then we'll start cutting away. So I've cut up all of those vertical score lines. We'll just do the same thing on the opposite side. All right, so again, we are only removing the squares at just above the triangles, all right? So I find that the easiest thing to do is to fold away the square we don't wanna cut, and that will just make room for our scissors to cut out the square we want to remove. So there's one, and then I'm gonna fold back the one we wanna keep. Again. So that top part is done. Do the same thing to the bottom here. All right. Oops, let's turn it this way. <laughs> all right, so all the cutting is done. So we moved away again where these scribbled out parts are. We've got our little triangular score line. So everything's pretty much ready to go. Before I adhere the paper, the last thing I'm gonna do is just gently kind of try to fold on those diagonal score lines. And I don't know if you can tell, but I put my index finger here, kind of come up from behind with my middle finger and my thumb, and just pinch, just kind of gently coercing that paper where I want it to go. You wanna be careful. Um, it should stop right where that uh, horizontal score line is. Okay, so we're just slightly bending it on those. Do the same thing on the other side. All right. Now, if you happen to have a one inch square punch still on hand, sadly Stampin' Up! retired there, so I don't have it any longer, that would make this really quick and easy because you want to cut out 17 one inch squares of designer series paper, okay? Now I did this manually, so I just cut one inch strips of paper and then cut them into one inch pieces. So it actually didn't take me that long. Obviously a punch would be faster, but you can do it either way. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere these. You're gonna adhere it on all of the squares in the center section. And then the squares that do not have the triangles. And then you will have one square along the bottom that will put DSP. So let me just show you, we've got one here on the bottom. Okay, so I chose the paper from Be Merry. <laughs> so I chose this cute mitten paper. Um, obviously, like I said, you could pick any of our beautiful Christmas papers and coordinating cardstock. Now I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as I can. I'm just gonna use my liquid glue because that's gonna give me some wiggle room here. And we will just go ahead and adhere those. I am just kind of paying attention to where my seam is here. And so I want to put it on this square. It's the second square in from the left. That will be the last square we adhere down on the bottom. Okay. All right, so next I'm gonna use some liquid glue and put that right along this half inch strip. You could certainly use tear and tape for this as well. But because we are actually gonna be folding that tab a little bit because of this angle here, I kinda of like the liquid glue. I just feel like it's gonna hold a little bit tighter, give us a little bit more flexibility there. I'm just kinda of putting liquid glue all along there. And because this is an equal number of sides, you can just go ahead and fold from the left and then fold from the right, and that should line up right where we want it to. 
Now again, since we've got these little diagonal sections here, I want to just go ahead and make sure that we press that down really well. Make sure that it adheres. So now we're going to start with adhering the bottom first. So this will be our top. This is going to be the last tab that we glue down. So I'm going to start with the two tabs on, the, I guess, perpendicular to it. Anyways, these two tabs we're going to adhere together first. Again, liquid glue is my choice here. And then so we're just going to go ahead and overlap those. Now they are equal. The size is equal, right? It's that one and a quarter inch square. So you just want to make sure that those overlap nicely. And the liquid glue kind of allows us to slide it into place. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this back one. Now again, I'm just kind of coercing a little bit those little diagonal sections there. Okay. And we're going to press this one over top and I'm just going to go ahead and put liquid glue all over. And again, slide that into place. It's really cool how those diagonal score lines just kind of it just tucks right in where you want it to go. And that's where you kind of get this round shape of this ornament. I love it. It's genius. <laughs> again, Samantha Clayton from Mixed Up Craft. All right, so then finally, we're just going to put glue on here again. And then we're going to place this last square over top. Now this we're going to hold into place for a little bit from the outside. And then you can kind of see it on the inside. I'm just going to, using the tip of my glue, just kind of press that into place. Or you can use your bone folder. That works as well. Okay, so bottom is done. Now for the top, I do need to punch some holes. So I've shown this on a previous um, ornament as well. Actually, it was also another Samantha Clayton ornament. Um, but I created a little one and a quarter inch square template. And I just kind of made lines at the five eighth inch mark to, to mark the center point. And then I just took our one eighth inch circle punch and punched in the center and just kind of made a little template here. So what I'll do is on each of these four tabs, I'm just going to place my template. And that's just kind of ensuring that we're getting in the center so that they line up nicely when we go to close the top of the box. So we've got our holes punched now. Okay. So then I'm paying attention to, so this was the tab that we overlapped on the bottom. Okay. So this will be the last tab that we'll adhere. So again, I'm going to start with the two sides. Now I'm going to grab a piece of our garden green stitched satin ribbon. It's 3 eighths of an inch in thickness or in width. And let me grab my ruler here. And I'm just going to cut 10 inches of ribbon here. 10 to 12 inches works. OK. I'm going to go ahead and just tie a knot at the bottom. Now because of the width of this ribbon and the size of the knot, it's not going to fall through that 1 8 of an inch hole that we created. Just got that knot at the end. Okay, got a little loop there. So then, now let me check again. I think this is our, okay, this is the front panel. So I'm just going to kind of take in the corner of the ribbon, feeding it through that hole. Pretty easy to feed through. Then I will do the opposite side. Start to pull that together. Now, if you wanted to close this off permanently, you could certainly be adding glue in between each of these layers like we did on the bottom. But this not gluing it allows you to fill this with treats. So obviously, you'd want to fill it with treats first. Mm -hmm and then um, go ahead and start closing it off with the ribbon. So then we're going to feed it through the back tab. It's going to look a little wonky <laughs> until we can 
finally put the last, the front tab over. And I just kind of pinch that into place and it just kind of magically forms its shape. and then pull that into place, okay? But again, it's be a way for you to get in and out of there, fill it with treats. All right, so that's the ornament, I love it, super cute. And I thought it'd be cute to put a little tag on the outside. So we're gonna use, I'm not sure if you even noticed this, in the Santa Builder Framelits dies, there is this tag framelit that I love. It already punches the hole for you. So I've cut one of those already in Whisper White. Now, if you had a uh, red rubber stamp, you'd wanna stamp first and then cut it out with the die. But we're gonna use some garden green ink and a sentiment from one of my favorite Christmas sets or holiday sets, Smitten Mittens. And this sentiment, may you have many merry moments surrounded by those you love. I love that sentiment. So we'll go ahead and stamp that because this is photopolymer. We can see right where we're stamping. All right, and then we can just feed that, assuming it's dry, I think it's dry, close enough. Feed that over the ribbon. Look, easy peasy, I love it. And that tag will kind of swing around, which is kind of cute actually, but that would just be a beautiful ornament hanging on your Christmas tree. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Again, um, this project and all the details will be live on my blog, but I just want to thank you all so much for joining me live tonight. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed day, and I will see you next Wednesday, same time, same place. Thank you all. Take care. Bye.